Thomas's life in the yards was never the same following his mistake with the coaches. The other engines loved teasing him about it, especially Henry, whose train was the one he had forgotten. Don't go running off now, little Thomas, he would tease as he passed by each morning. Your place is here in the yard, after all. Thomas tried to not let Henry's comments get to him, but he couldn't help feeling trapped by his duties. His one chance at exploring the world outside the yard had been wonderful once he had returned to the station to rescue the stranded passengers. He longed to see it again. The others get to see the whole railway every day, he sighed wistfully to Edward one evening in the sheds. I'm just stuck with coaches and trucks morning, noon, and night. Who knows when I'll even be trusted to pull a train by the fat director again. Don't get ideas above your station, little Thomas, scoffed Henry from a corner of the shed. You'll only run into trouble with that silly daydream of yours. You're a shunter, not an express engine. Go stick in a tunnel, Henry, and leave him alone, said Edward firmly. You'll be late with your evening train if you dawdle about here picking on engines smaller than you. Henry snorted away in a cloud of steam. The tunnel incident was one event he certainly wanted to forget about. You shouldn't let Henry tease you like that, said Edward to Thomas. Maybe you will get to pull a train again, someday. Thomas still looked glum. I know I will, but when? You tender engines always get the important jobs. No one notices us tank engines. You think we don't notice? asked Edward. Thomas, believe it or not, your work is more important than you think. You may be little, but you've got a big job, an important one that needs doing. Where would the railway be without a shunter to keep the trains running? Old Henry couldn't do that. Tender engines don't shunt after all. Thomas felt better after that. Henry still kept up with his teasing, but Thomas just took it in his stride. He couldn't run his trains without me, he thought. But I daren't test the fat director's temper by causing a delay. I'll just have to watch for an opportunity. One day, Thomas brought Henry's coaches to the station as usual. He ran round to the front just as Henry backed onto the train. Shouldn't you be at the back? Henry asked. A heavy train like this will need a good push to start properly. Sorry, not today, said Thomas cheekily. I've got another train to arrange soon. Besides, I thought a big strong engine like you could handle it easily. Henry scowled and was about to retort when a little boy called from the platform. Daddy, why does Gordon look different today? He's gotten smaller. Henry seethed in embarrassment. Thomas saw an opportunity for getting his own back. There you see, Henry, he teased. Even that little boy thinks you're a big, strong engine like Gordon. I'd hate to disappoint a passenger, wouldn't you? Oh, shut up, snapped Henry. Just then, the guards whistled blew, and with much noise and steam, he went on his way. Thomas chuckled as he watched Henry disappear. Then, he went back to work. Henry's driver grew concerned as they sped through the countryside. Steady, old boy, he called anxiously as they rattled through the tunnel. No need to go so fast. But Henry was in no mood to listen. He kept brooding over what Thomas had said. Stupid little tank engine, he muttered darkly. I am big. I am strong. I'm better than that old blowhard Gordon anyway. I'll show him. I'll show him. But pulling a heavy train takes plenty of steam, and of course, plenty of water. Because Henry was hurrying along, he was using more than his tender tank could replenish. Despite the fireman's best efforts, the steam pressure dwindled with water supply, and they were forced to stop miles away from the next station. I'm sorry, Henry, said his driver, but we can continue on safely. We'll have to drop your fire and get another engine to take the train. Henry moaned in defeat. Oh, what a despicable end for an engine like me, he sighed. Just despicable. When Thomas stopped later for a drink, a red-faced porter hurried from across the yard towards them. Hello, said his driver. What's up? 
Henry's run out of water and has had his fire dropped, panted the porter. We need you to help shift his train to the next station. Edward's coming to collect it, but we can't keep the main line blocked for long, or else Fat Hat's timetables will be in tatters. Do you think you can manage it? Well, we'll give it a good try, replied the driver. Won't we, Thomas? Thomas grinned with excitement. Finally, a chance to prove himself. Thomas found Henry standing cold and miserable. What's the matter, Henry? He teased. Trying to watch some scenery? It's a sight better than that dirty old tunnel any day. Be quiet, muttered Henry. Running out of water could have been dangerous for my passengers. I'm lucky to have dropped my fire when I did. From what I've heard, it was your own fault. What were you trying to break the land speed record and all? Thomas replied. Now who's got ideas about his station? Without another word, he drew ahead to couple to the stricken engine, who was quite speechless. At the next station, Edward was waiting in the siding when Thomas steamed in, towing a sullen-looking Henry and several relieved passengers. They came to thank Thomas for his rescue. Thomas, unused to such praise, could only sheepishly say, it was nothing, really, all in a day's work. If you like, Thomas, said Edward, I can take Henry home while you run the train on to Tidmouth. It's an important job, and we can't let the passengers miss their connections. Thomas looked thoughtfully at the older engine and back to the train. Then he smiled. No thank you, Edward, he said. It's nice of you to offer, but I must get back to the yard. Where would the railway be without the shunter to keep the trains running? Edward laughed. Where indeed, he replied. I'm proud of you, Thomas. You've got the fine makings of a really useful engine inside you. I'll see if I can arrange a duty swap with you one of these days. In the meantime, keep your chin up and never forget how much depends on the smaller jobs. Passenger trains have their grandeur, but it's the shunter who keeps the railway running. Take care. And with that, Edward steamed away with the train, leaving Thomas to haul Henry safely home. He still remained thoughtful. Hmm, a really useful engine, he said. I like the sound of that. <laughs>